Hi, and welcome back, my friends. So, this weekend I did quite a bit of artsy things. I finally got to go to the museum because it reopened with this really cool exhibit of Monet paintings. And I haven't really left my house because COVID. And this was something I really wanted to do. Uh, and then the next day, I actually got to have the house all to myself for about four hours. And I thought it would be a good time to get back into making some polymer clay earrings. But as I did the glazing process, they are now pinned. <clears throat> and even before this, I had played around with some polymer clay with my friend. I wanted to make a paint palette that was like the moon and the sun. And doing that was so hard, but it was so much fun. And since she was still working on her polymer clay sculpture, I then thought, oh, maybe I can do some clay earrings, and I've been very inspired by the Sacred Heart, and I thought they would look really cute as earrings. So that's what I wanted to do again for the shop, and it was really funny when I did it the second time because I really forgot how I even made them the first time. So I remember doing small balls and then morphing them into the heart. But I didn't remember how I made the heart indent. Um, but we got there and I'm happier with the third attempt, so the first two attempts were a bit rough, but afterwards I got my groove. I knew which tools I wanted to use, so you'll see me kind of switch between a couple tools in the beginning, mainly because I couldn't remember what I had used. I actually didn't have a lot of time for this sculpting session. I think I cut myself off at an hour because I had a birthday dinner that I needed to go to as well. So I needed to count for the drive over and I wanted these to at least be baked. So I only got to making about seven of these Sacred Heart pins. Um, and I'm hoping that I have time in the future because a three-day weekend is coming and my work has these things called half-day Fridays. So during the week you work an extra hour so that on Fridays they're half days, which I really like because it's summer and I really like having that opportunity to just go outdoors and I've been wanting to paint outside for the longest time, but I just never have the time during the week. Um, I don't know where time flies. Well, I do spend time outside walking my cats, but I would see all these little flowers and I just really wanted to paint them, but most of them kind of bloomed and died already, so I missed that chance. But there are some really nice vegetation going on outside and I would really like to just kind of paint from real life, from nature, just the way that Monet kind of did. So I've been really inspired to just go outdoors and maybe sketch. I'm hoping that with these half day Fridays, I can go places. I have no clue what that boom sound was, but everything is good. 
I guess that's just another one of the suburban noises. Yeah, so what were we talking about? Going outside and painting. Yeah, that's on my bucket list of summer to-dos. Also, rewatching this, my favorite part of doing the clay pins slash earrings was making the flames. I loved doing that part so much. It's just, I don't know, the way that you can just pull apart something and make the flame. I can't describe it. It's just a feeling and it was my favorite part to do. I actually have a couple other ideas of polymer clay pins I want to make. One of them is the Loteria cards. It's like a Mexican bingo game where the cards have Spanish words on them with a picture and it's a very classic game that my mom really likes playing because it takes little brain power but yeah I think they would be very cute as pins maybe I'll make them into earrings but I feel like they'd be a little chunky I also have an earring idea from one of the thrifted earrings that I have I really like the shape of it and I'd like to make some cool patterns and the colors that I really like and see how they turn out. I also want to make sure they're not too heavy for everyone's ears, but I also want to make sure that I'm not copying someone else, even though I feel like lots of earrings are kind of the same nowadays, but I really want to be intentional with what I give people and do my due diligence. everyone I just wanted to give you an update on that sticker that I was making in procreate the last time um I have the painting here um, this is what I was working on in the last video getting it ready to be made I had these ones outsourced this time just to sort of test out the whole process and there was also a really heavy discount in which you would get 50 stickers for about $20 and usually I think it's about 60 maybe a bit more so they came out a little smaller than what I wanted but I still think they're really nice because I mean if you put it on your phone it's I think that's a decent size um, sure I could go bigger and if I want to I can probably just make it here but I just wanted to see how they would be so here is a closer uh, what I added was the word nutrir uh, nurture it's the word that I was using when I was making this painting so I just wanted to include it I was hesitant to write it in my sketchbook but in procreate I just went back and added that word my earrings in the oven are ready so I am going to go check on them but I just want to give you a little update and also there will be a shop update hopefully on the 21st of May that's what I'm targeting. 
I have to sometimes give myself a deadline, else I won't do anything. So, fingers crossed that by at least the end of the month, I'll have a shop update, if not, hopefully earlier on the 21st. Okay, so now that our sacred hearts are baked, the painting session continues. I used the whole by an acrylic gouache that I have, and I didn't like the red that I had because it's a bit too vibrant. I wanted it to be a little more muted, a little darker, so I added some burnt sienna, and I did two coats of these, front and back, because originally I thought they were going to be clay earrings, but now that they're pins, I don't really see why I painted the back, but there's still a nice finish, so I probably will still do that. Um, maybe next time I will get the colored polymer clay so that it kind of speeds up this process. Um, making clay pins takes a lot of time, so I knew I had to paint these, so before I went to one of my outdoor practices, I thought I should do at least the first layer of paint, and if I had time, I can do the second layer on top of it, and then, you know, go do my thing, come back, and then paint another layer, and then maybe go wash up, and then move on to the, to the yellow flame part which is kind of what you see here. Um, that's why the lighting has changed and everything because it's later on in the afternoon. I found making these clay pins or earrings or whatever to be very meditative because you're kind of doing the same task over and over. So it was nice to kind of just get out of my head and do this in a sort of meditative state. I also really just feel like I don't give myself time to not, oh, I don't know if you can see here all that thunder. We'll let it die off. But yeah, I always feel like I am searching for something to be always put on in the background, which in a lot of the times I do have a YouTube video going on in the background, but I also really enjoy the silence. So doing, when I was painting these, I actually would forget to put on a new YouTube video and then would just carry on in that silence. I often think I'm always thinking in my head or trying to find something to distract me. So it's nice to have a moment to not really think about anything. And usually that only happens when I'm running. So it's nice to be stationary and not exerting all of my energy. And I love running, but I like to get in that headspace while I'm actually at home. I thought I should talk about the sacred heart and the symbolism behind it because I have been painting it and drawing it in different sort of compositions and now I'm making it into some clay earrings, well, scratch that, into clay pins. Um, so the Sacred Heart is actually pretty religious in its symbolic meaning. It originally represents like Jesus is Christ's actual heart and my version of it isn't the original version of it. There's usually a cross where I have the flames. Um, and then 
It can sometimes have the crown of thorns around it and then when it's usually in a painting it'll have this glow behind the heart as if it's like the divine light of love and I really identified with that symbolism which you know I'm pretty sure a lot of us can we all go through our own hardships and we're all we all have our scars and despite that a lot of us have been able to make something good out of that um, and so it's a symbolism that I've been exploring and I've been trying to make my own I always really like telling stories in my illustration or drawings and I really like doing that through symbolism and finding elements that have meanings behind them and then putting in those elements into my work. And I do have a sticker that will be releasing with the shop update of one of the compositions that I liked having with the Sacred Heart. It had two hands sort of caressing the heart mainly because when I think of hands I think of the actions they can do upon a person um, both good and bad as in they can inflict the pain but also they can uplift you so another way that I play with symbolism in one of my sacred heart pieces is that I played around with the number of tears that were falling from the eye and the number three was actually the number of manifestation so it was like your prayers and your positive affirmations are being heard and now they're being responded so it was me kind of saying like your suffering has been heard by a higher being or just you know the world and it's being responded to in this fire or this flame of light in the second composition that i did for the sacred heart i actually have a rose that replaces where the flames are and it has its stem jutting out from the wound and this is basically just saying how something that's so beautiful can sometimes inflict pain and that's kind of where my thought process had stopped for that so yeah, that's my little spiel of what I do to get inspiration and how I tell a story in my own works and just the reasoning behind why I choose to do my art in the way that I do it. I also wanted to apologize that, you know, some of these shots, some of the lighting, it's all over the place and I'm trying to make a conscious effort of trying to remember to move the camera or just to double check um, but it can kind of be a strain on the creative process to get into the flow and then have to kind of stop to double check when I make a video but it's a learning process it's a muscle I have to learn to flex and yeah doing the line work for this was so hard and it felt like so much pressure was on me to try and make them all look similar and all had the same line thickness and obviously some of them look a little wonky 
I think once I put the eyelashes and I put the little teardrop, they all came together. And hopefully some of you like it. Mm? This guy is angry right now. It's actually really nice that we are having a thunderstorm and that it's raining because it was so humid today that I didn't know if I'd fall asleep. So now there's a cool breeze and I feel a lot better. And while I am looking forward to the summer, I'm also not looking forward to the humidity. But it's really cool to see all the lightning storms during the summer. I feel like in California, yeah, there are some, but here, <laughs> they're kind of a regular thing because of the humidity. Um, and I always feel really cozy when a thunderstorm comes. But anyways, we are coming to the end of this video, and I didn't record the whole glazing process, but I hope you like this video and I'll see you soon.